802.11 wireless networks have quickly become one of the fastest growing areas of computer networking. Human beings want the freedom to connect to the internet and computer networks without the restrictions of having to use cables or wires. We all know this. In our society today, we want to be able to function, sit where we want, walk where we want, and have our devices connect to any wireless networks that are available. People want to move about freely while still enjoying this wireless aspect of technology in the 21st century. So how exactly do 802 2.11 wireless networks work and how do they allow us to connect using our wireless devices and what security aspects come into play when we start using wireless technology. I'm going to get into that in this series on 802.11 wireless networks starting with this introduction video showing the basics of wireless networks explained simply and easily. So stay tuned. Now, as I've alluded to in previous videos, it's better in any industry, most importantly in the IT industry, to have a definitive set of standards that all players, manufacturers, technicians, everyone operates by. In the IT field, the IEEE, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, is the organization that oversees these standards. And when it comes to wireless networking, the set of standards the IEEE defines are known as 802.11 or 802.11. The IEEE committee has defined six standards under the Wireless 802.11 Wireless Local Area Networks, WLANs, and those six standards are these, 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11g, 802.11n, 802.11ac, and 802.11ad. Under each one of these standards, radio links are used to provide network connectivity to devices like PCs, laptops, printers, servers, etc. through transceivers or transmitter receivers. These transceivers are better known as APs and that stands for access points or sometimes they're called wireless APs, WAPs. APs transmit and receive signals to and from our wireless network adapters which are used by the end devices like our smartphones, our PCs, our laptops, printers, servers, whatever is connecting wirelessly has a wireless network adapter on it. By installing a number of APs, you can have wireless connectivity and coverage over a large area of floor space or outdoor space. And what I'm about to show you is not definitive by any means, but it's a good diagram example of a wireless network with multiple APs or access points connected to show you how those APs function to provide wireless connectivity. Looking at this network diagram here, you have several switches connecting in devices, also known as access devices. These are your PCs, laptops, printers, servers that are all connected on the network. In most cases, you will use a physical wired connection from the switch to a wireless access point, or AP, like this. This is what allows wirelessly connected devices to connect to the physical network for either internet connectivity or to access network resources that the wireless devices are allowed to access. In many networks today, you have multiple APs connected in different areas, allowing someone with a wireless device to roam about the entire wireless area while remaining connected to the network. Multiple APs allow for the network signal to be transmitted over a larger area. Again, just keep in mind that the wireless access points or APs are usually physically connected to the network via a layer 2 switch or switches. And another concept that may help you a bit when looking at wireless access points is treating them much like they're a switch as well. As an AP functions much like a switch that connects multiple wireless devices into a physical connection to a network. So with that, in this video at least, I won't go into much more depth as I'll get into other wireless networking concepts and details in subsequent videos, but one of the things you will need to remember, especially if you've taken the Network Plus exam, is the different wireless standards and what makes them different from one another. Beginning with the 802.11b, you'll need to know that 802.11b has a throughput of 11 megabits per second and runs at a frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. 802.11b was the second wireless standard with the first ever wireless standard just being called 802.11. Then you have 802.11a. 802.11a has a throughput of 54 megabits per second and works at the 5 gigahertz frequency. 802.11a is an incompatible with 802.11b and 802.11g as they use 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Then you have 802.11g and that improved upon the 802.11b standard because it increased the transfer rate to 54 megabits per second but it remained compatible with the 802.11b standard by running at the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. 802.11n was designed to run at both 
2.4 GHz and 5 GHz and is compatible with 802.11b and 802.11g. The benefit of the 802.11n wireless network is that it can run at the less crowded 5 GHz space to provide better coverage, and it was touted to have a possible throughput of 600 megabits per second. Then more recently you have 802.11ac, which came out in 2013. 802.11ac only uses 5 GHz frequency and is touted as having a possible throughput of 3.2 gigabits per second. It was developed to provide better connectivity for home media and streaming services, along with better connectivity for all wireless devices in general. And last but certainly not least, and also added in 2013, is the 802.11ad standard, which uses a new and different frequency band of 60 gigahertz. Now the theoretical throughput of 802.11ad is supposed to be 7 gigabits per second and is planned for handling mobile offices in the near future as well as all other wireless technologies. Overall, understand how wireless devices work and how wireless access points are connected to an existing network typically. And if you're thinking about taking the Network Plus exam anytime soon, make sure to know the six standards I just showed you. Know their speed, frequency, and which of the other standards they're compatible with, and you'll be good to go. Make sure to keep watching for the other videos in the series that I'm going to upload in the near future on wireless networking and 802.11 wireless networks and how they function, and I'll see you in the next video.